Two free plays coming your way in just a moment. I'm going to take a look at the NBA games between the Clippers and Portland and Charlotte and Miami. Those are coming up in just a moment. Of course, last night, the charity play of the week cashed in. I gave you a play, a raise the bar 1500 star release, number 50 out of 77 from the hottest and winningest handicapper at this site over the past, oh gosh, almost maybe nine and a half months now. That being Trace Adams, and he delivered with the Boston Red Sox on the run line in an 11-4 route behind David Price at Atlanta. You got that $99 play for free. So the charity play of the week cashes in for a third straight week, and you can see the long-term run overall. I think it's 38 out of 54 weeks over the past year plus. Well, today, I'm once again asking you to make a contribution to a family in need. You know, it seems like we talk about this all the time, but this is another family faced with a member that is undergoing cancer treatment. And as you know, insurance simply doesn't foot all the bills. This is a family out of Austin, Texas, whose father, uh, about three months ago, started undergoing treatment for advanced cancer in his neck and his jaw at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. Now, I've done that drive, Austin to Houston. You know, without traffic, you're lucky it's three hours. With traffic, ugh, it's really an ugly drive. Needless to say, you know, there's the travel expenses. There's the accommodation expenses. There's all the other things that insurance simply doesn't cover. So the children uh, put up a fundraising site for their family, for their father. And I thought it would be the perfect thing to feature as the charity play of the week. So I already put my $250 in. You don't have to do that. You can put $5, 25 50 500 whatever the hell you want to. All I'm asking you, though, to do is to participate. This is the way the Charity Play of the Week program works. Hey, listen, if you go and click on the button here or if you're watching the video underneath, you'll see the link. You can make your contribution making using a credit card or PayPal, etc. But you also read the story. You know, this is a family where they're faced that if they can't foot the bills for the co-pays, they may not be able to continue affording treatment at Anderson Cancer Center, one of the premier cancer centers in the country, and may have to turn elsewhere. That sucks, but that's reality. Listen, guys, my, um, my sister-in-law is going to start uh, chemo again. She's had chemo. She's had radiation. She's had surgery. Uh, she's on the list to get into a clinical trial, all because she has uh, stage 4 cancer, a very rare sarcoma. And she starts uh, chemotherapy again in a couple of weeks. He doesn't have the money. Thankfully, I'm there, you know, and I, I have all the money I ever need. So anything they need, it's my wife's sister. Of course, I'm going to help out. Not everybody is so fortunate. So again, those in time of need, I'm asking you to open up your wallets. I made you a winner last night for free, courtesy of Trace Adams, and I'm asking you now to make a donation. That's really the key to the charity play of the week. Okay, let's get to the complimentary plays. Yes, all the other discounts, promos, et cetera, are on the homepage. And, of course, you know when the charity play wins, I'm not beyond bribing you. You can save $175 off the purchase price of any handicap or 60-day package by using coupon code SAVE175. You can save $125 off the purchase price of any handicap or 30-day package by using coupon code SAVE125. Or you can save $50 off any handicap or 7-day package by using coupon code SAVE50. If you have any Insta rebates or applicable... If you have a package already with a guy and you want to extend it out further and take advantage of the discounted savings and maybe your instant rebate as well, that works too. Again, I'm bribing you to save you money so you then give some money. Listen, guys, I can't tell you how much money we lost by giving away Trace Adams' play last night. I can tell you that in the four and a half years since I started the charity play program, probably given away, I don't know, over $5 million worth of retail plays for free. You won a lot of money, so now I'm asking you to help. Okay, let's talk about the playoffs here. The favorites uh, split out last night, 22 and 13 so far in the postseason. We've had 23 double-digit blowouts, 20 of them by favorites. Uh, only three dogs coming up with those double-digit blowouts so far. The Pacers in games one and four against uh, the uh, who, Toronto Raptors. Jeez, I had the Pacers last night. They were my best bet. Oh, what a collapse by the Pacers, too. My God, I thought they'd win that damn game. Then as they're just totally, totally falling by the wayside, I'm thinking, please stay within the damn number, which, of course, they did in the three-point loss as I cashed in with another 15-dime best bet winner. Uh, the other one, of course, the Trailblazers winning out right in game number four at home against the Clippers. The unders, well, over-under split again last night, but the under is 23-11-1. 
so far in the postseason. Now, let's take a look at these particular series tonight. Heat and the Hornets. The home team is a perfect 4-0 straight up and against the spread. Clippers and Trailblazers, same deal. 4-0 straight up against the spread. Warriors, Rockets, the home team, 2-2 two and two against the spread. Uh, let's talk about the late game first. I'm going to take a focus on the uh, Clippers-Portland game. As you know, Chris Paul is out for the rest of the, uh, well, indefinitely, they say, but I really doubt with that type of broken hand that he's going to be coming back and playing, even if he advances the championship. And Blake Griffin, who was playing on one leg anyway, is out again now because of the torn quad. Blazers shot only 41%, but the Clippers were even worse at 36% in the game four loss on Monday, 98-84. And what's really surprising in that game is that Portland won despite the fact that C.J. McCollum and uh, Damian Lillard only had so-so games. The latter had 12 points. The former had 19 points. Had 31 combined points. You know, they average a combined 45 points a game. And they certainly struggled in games number one and two, especially in McCollum at L.A., as the Clippers' backcourt really harassed them, constantly trapping them, and also preventing Lillard from driving the lane. Problem is, what has benefited Portland, if you happen to be a Clippers fan, you've got to be concerned with the outstanding play turned in by the most unlikely of heroes, and that happens to be their center, Mason Plumley. Now, he only had two points in Monday's game. Two little points, okay? But he had 14 rebounds and 10 assists. He had 21 rebounds, 9 assists, and 6 little points in game number 3. When he is doing that type of work, one, clearing the boards, that allows Portland to run. Two, they're going and running the inside-out game. He's a good passer, as you can see by the number of assists. I mean, we're talking point guard numbers here for a seven-foot center. Good hands on the ball, and that helps Portland with uh, their offensive flow. So he has certainly been a stud for them. DeAndre Jordan, you know, uh, re-signed with the Clippers, even though he was going to be the third scoring option, spurning uh, Mark Cuban and the Mavericks money. Well, now he might be the number one scoring option with Paul and Blake Griffin out. Problem is, he's had some nice statistical games in this particular uh, series, but his lousy free throw shooting has certainly been a killer. Five for 22 at the line the last three games with 21 total points. You know he has launched only 23 shots in the series. Where are the Clippers going to get the points tonight? Paul Pierce, who has been struggling, 16.7% in the series so far. Jamal Crawford, who has been struggling. J.J. Redick, he's been playing with a uh, bruised heel. And you've seen the last two games how he's played. First two games in the series, he was 15 for 27 from the field, combined 17 points in each game. Last two games, 5 for 23, with a total of 13 points. So you're now going, if you're going to bet on the Clippers, or if you have Clippers money in the series, you're relying on guys like Crawford, uh, injured J.J. Redick, uh, DeAndre Jordan, who can hit the broad side of the barn from the free throw line. Uh, Jeff Green. Oh, yeah. Now you feel confident. Doc's son, Austin. Portland playing with confidence. They're a three-point favorite for a reason. i got to go with Portland. I know the Clippers have done the last man up thing all season long when Griffin was out. But now you're lost with Paul, too. And he's the heart and soul of the team. Without him, I don't see how they get the job done. So I'll lay the points for Portland in that game. Your early play is going to be Miami at home against Charlotte. Now, listen, I was on the Hornets in game number four and cashed them with a 15 time play on them as they won 89-85 on Monday to the high of the series. Strange game. Heat were up by 11 in the first half, then the Hornets were up by 18 in the third, and then it came right down to the wire. Uh, Kemble Walker, 34 points. That was a career playoff high for him in that game. But Jeremy Lin has really been dynamite here for Miami, or for Charlotte in this series. 21 points in game number four, 18 points in game number three, both bench minutes, right? Getting outstanding contributions for them. And what Charlotte has done in this series, you know, this is a team that averaged uh, over 10 three-pointers a game, one of the top three-point shooting teams in the league this year. But in this series, they're only averaging four a game because what Miami has done is effectively – uh, with their perimeter defense, denied Charlotte the opportunity to launch from downtown. So instead, Charlotte, with Lynn and Walker, are continually cutting to the basket. Easy dump-offs, drives to the lane, Whitehead back there, really not getting much help. He needs some help, probably from Luau Dang. He needs somebody back there to help be a rim protector and close off the lane. So that's been Charlotte's MO here in the past two games, and it's been successful. 
They've also been starting Al Jefferson again and working the ball down inside low to him and letting him do his dirty work on the blocks. Frank Kaminsky, though, had the big game in game number three, 16 points, pretty much missing in action in game number four. It's his second straight start in the series. Uh, Marvin Williams has been awful in this series, other than game number three when he had 12 points. He's been like the invisible man in this series. I mean, uh, just uh, absolutely nothing. Uh, Nick Batum is uh, supposed to come back tonight after missing the last two games after he re-aggravated a sprained ankle, so Charlotte gets a bonus there. But this is all about the Heat and the Heat playing at home. They have won in various playoff series, going back to the LeBron years, 13 consecutive first-round playoff games at home. And they have won eight straight at home, dating back to the regular season to March 17th, when ironically they lost to the Charlotte Hornets uh, at home as well. It's a bigger number than perhaps I would like. I mean, I would have preferred and probably would have used Miami at minus three and a half to four as a best bet tonight. But I still would go ahead and take Miami minus six. That line did escalate from minus five and a half earlier today. And of the two free plays, even though the Clippers are injury riddled, I still like Miami a little more than Portland as your free play. Now, listen, guys, the free plays have not exactly been stellar here of late. And, you know, I pride myself on winning free plays, and I've always done exceptionally well with them. Because my philosophy has always been you take the best of the worst and you give them as a free play. What that means is every single day I find the best bet on the board. That's my game. That's the game you get. That's the game my money gets, okay? And what happens is the rest of the plays, well, then I pick among them and I release them as free plays. Well, when you're taking maybe your second or third choices, you've got a great chance at increasing your winning percentage with the free selections. However, as you have noticed over the past week, I've given you a best bet and a secondary play, mainly in baseball, because I know how easy it is to win in baseball right now. Won again last night with the Red Sox on the run line, 11 to 4 round Atlanta. So in essence, I'm giving you my best bet and my second best play every single day. Well, what? I've won five of the last six days. I've had three 2-0 and sweeps in there. Well, it's good for you guys that are getting the best bets because you're winning even more money just like me. But, of course, the free selections, well, where do you think that secondary play is coming from? It's the best of the worst, and it's being escalated. But I just feel right now everybody wants to know your opinion in the NBA, but at the same time you just can't walk away, as far as I'm concerned, from the easy money to be made in baseball. So – I get so choked up talking about this. Uh, so that'll do it for today's uh, video report. I wish you well, guys, and we will talk again tomorrow when we do this one more time. Good luck, everybody.